three. Yes! Here's quick release three. Got it! And it's good! We wrap up the week of basketball coverage on Fred TV from the Luke Urban Fieldhouse at Durfee as the Hilltoppers continue Southeast Conference play. Hello again, everybody. I'm Evan Massoud. Welcome inside Durfee, joined by Brendan Kelly once again. Uh, Brendan, we had Diamond Boys yesterday. Zach Souza joining me for the broadcast there. Boys, real defensive game, 39-36. The Bengals winning a conference game against the Rams. Tonight, we see conference play on the other side. Durfee hosting BR. Yeah, we're back at it, SEC basketball. I've said it before, I'll say it again. Conference is very balanced. You know, you have to come ready to play every night, and Durfee's got a tough task ahead of him. BR at 3-8, and eight, but as usual, a team up closer to Boston. Eight losses doesn't really tell the whole story. BR, a very balanced team. They're young, but they have had some really tough opponents. So, you know, the record necessarily doesn't really show what they've been doing all year. No, I mean, they're very, very well coached. Dougie Owls does a great job over there. And now with the, you know, top 32 teams getting in and the new, you know, power rankings format, strength to schedule matters. And, you know, they're going to be very, very battle tested this time of year. Durfee, the last time we saw them was that blowout win last week against Somerset. It's a good bounce back for them, one that they really needed. But then they dropped their next game to Braintree. So really, going back, it's four out of the last five. The Hilltoppers have been on the losing end. They're at six and five. Yeah, it's natural up and down of the season, but we're getting late January, February's next week. Got to start seeing a little bit more balance out of the Hilltoppers. Well, Brendan broke out the vest tonight, and that's usually been pretty lucky. I almost wore mine, but tonight I went with the coat. We'll see if it pans out in the end. Live basketball is up next. Stay with us. I'm Mike Labossier, What's Upper Reservation Forester. And I'm Paul Furland, the Administrator of Community Utilities. Protecting open space is a benefit today, and it's a gift to future generations. For over 150 years, Fall River has been a leader in environmental preservation. The Southeastern Massachusetts Bioreserve ensures forests and fields remain undeveloped and accessible. The Community Preservation Act is a vital component to fulfill climate goals. Since 2017, CPA funds totaling nearly $1.3 million have been used to acquire conservation areas in Fall River. Educational programs within the bioreserve connect families to nature and promote understanding and respect for diverse culture, history, and wildlife. Half of Fall River, about 12,000 acres, an area the size of Mattapoisa, is protected water and woodland. Healthy forests minimize flooding, reduce erosion, and provide habitat for endangered species. As the region expands manufacturing and technology, people are directly reliant on green infrastructure as an irreplaceable source of clean water and air. Miles of trails wind through unique landscapes which appeal to hikers, cross-country skiers, and mountain bikers. Specific areas are open for safe seasonal hunting. The Bioreserve promises endless discoveries and recreational experiences year-round. CPA funds have supported thousands of significant projects in Massachusetts. Thank you for your continued interest in community beautification and betterment.
right, here we go. Here we go. Game time, finally. <laughs> My gosh. JV was a marathon, Brendan. Holy cow. And you know, they won it 69-65, but we're talking a JV game that was nearly two hours. I've been there, young coach, you're coaching hard, both JV coaches coaching real hard, strategizing, but wow. <laughs> Very long game. Very long game. We're ready to rock though here. This game was supposed to begin at 6.30. It is 7.15 here in the Rev. So we've waited a while. I hope it was worth the wait. Hilltoppers in need of a win badly tonight. They have no conference wins this season. They need this one to stay in it and to keep the record in the right direction here. 500 would not be good. So they need to stay above 500 and they need a win tonight against BR. Yeah, right now with the power ranking format, Durfee, while having a winning record right now, they're on the outside looking in as far as the top 32. So it looks like they're gonna have to get in with old school over 500 records. So this is very imperative for them to, to play well against a very well Coach Bridgewater Random team. BR starts with possession, going for a three to begin it. No good, and the rebound will go to Durfee. Tough play. The ball is loose, and it'll be picked up by Arguello, and BR will keep it. Starters for the Trojans, led by head coach Doug Alves. Number 10, Captain Dylan Rodriguez. Number 11, Captain Jake Golden. Number 12, Captain Luke Barry. Number 21, Noah Perry Lewis. And number 34, Tyler Katogio. For Durfee, they go with their traditional starting lineup with number three, Jaden Espinal. Wearing number one tonight, Eric Lucas. Number two, Devontae Stewart. Number 23, Jaleel Simmons. And number 22 at center, Lexus Montilla. This has been the lineup Durfee's been going with pretty consistently the entire year. There's been a couple of wrinkles here and there, but this has been their primary starting lineup with the three guards. And Simmons with the number change here. It's Lucas, Lucas is with Oh, the Lucas, number. my Lu bad, Lucas excuse me, with the yes. You did say that and I, <laughs> I wasn't listening. Very curious to see how both teams are gonna come out. It was a lot of standing, you know, you, yeah. you're in your routine for a pregame and you get thrown off routine a little bit. I'm curious to see how both teams are gonna kind of find their flow in the game. So much so that you saw the teams coming out to take shots in between quarters and during timeouts. Because, I mean, really, you're talking from a routine standpoint almost an hour late for their normal situation. Three is good. Great to see Lucas start off well with a good jump shot from three-point land. It's important. We've talked about it all year. It's very important for these guards to get off to a good start start seeing some of the, their shots fall, and then they get the opportunity to really showcase their speed as they just do. Great job by Lucas on the make, Espinal with the forward pass. And that was almost, there were almost a little stutter step there for Jaden, he got lucky, because uh, I think one more, and it might have been a travel on the two on one, but Durfee with the break, another bad pass, and another break here for Lucas. And it will not go, tipped. Oh, Espinal, how about that? Great extra effort, hustle play, forcing Coach Alves into a timeout early in the first quarter. Not a bad start. <laughs> no, we talk about it all the time, having great starts to quarters, obviously great starts to games. Espinal and, and Lucas are volume players, so their points come in bunches, and you can see Lucas really kind of getting engaged early. It's important for these guys to see shots fall. Yeah, we've seen some slow starts, and that, that's something that, you know, the Hilltoppers are trying to overcome, the consistency. Coach DeCruz preaching that it's, it's got to, they have to be more consistent if they want to get into the playoffs and, you know, have any kind of a run. Yeah, we're getting pretty much past the point of normal flow of a season, normal ups and downs. I mean, the calendar's gonna turn to February next week. We're gonna be hitting the three-quarter mark really soon. Team's gonna have their identities right now and 
playoff teams are going to start showing consistency, and non-playoff teams won't. So this is very, very important game for Durfee. Out of the timeout. Long three, no good. Espinal with the rebound, and the Hilltoppers will take it back. Great block out on the other end by Devontae Stewart. Kind of that undersized forward Durfee has a rich tradition of. Lucas had lost the ball, got it back. Lu um, Espinal able to put up the shot, no good though. And it's taken back by Perry Lewis. Durfee's moving real well in their zone right now. Durfee's switched oh. up their defenses quite a bit this year. Yeah. You're not, you know, if I was to scout, there's not one set defense that they, they go to right now. Kind of packed in, moving real quick in the zone. Great effort there by uh, Stewart. Even better from Espinal. He's going to take it back himself. Great a job by the thing run. Great job by the two guards. And that's three plays in a row where almost identical. Yeah, and, and you know, they're the ones that went up the ladder against a taller player. And this is so big. I mean, you get you get the close ones to drop early. Yeah. Then, then the far ones, it's not falling. But defensively, there's a, there's a big pep in this step, which is really nice to see to start. Oh! Simmons with a fantastic <laughs> swap. How about that from over the top? No foul, just out of bounds. And the Trojans making some changes here to their uh, the starters. Is that somebody I have to go? Is Jaleel Simmons somebody on my to-do list to, to get playing volleyball? Because that looked like a <laughs> heck of a spike that we would use in the spring. It sure did. <laughs> We've got quite a few volleyball players on the basketball team, which I always like, but Simmons not one of them. I don't know if that's something I got to uh, get on top of this week, because that was fantastic. That, that would have hit the 10 foot line. <laughs> Outside to Stewart, near side for three is no good. Great stretch from Montilla, and he is fouled. It's our first miscue for either side. The basket was good on the other end for the Trojans. Balutis with uh, the first points for BR, the foul. Alexis Montilla doing what he does best, crashing the offensive boards. Giving Durfee extra opportunities to get the, get the easy ones from the free throw line. Montilla hits the first. All right, so now <laughs> we might have to go see Coach Alves because he told me number 24 Pelicano was out tonight and the foul was on number 24 Pelicano. But he's not on the floor, is it? Yes, he is. So now we got to take that off the book. we got to change that. So he's in. <laughs> Well, I, I think, guess he's not out. Well, I, I definitely think, like many high schools, last minute day, change in, in this day and age, jersey numbers switch up quite often. As we said, that Eric Lucas now wearing yeah. number one. Well, we did go. Yeah, but we did go through, and he. That's okay. It's all good. We'll straighten that out. When you get a big volleyball spike block on one possession, you know you're going after another one. Yeah. The second one, it's very hard to get that next one. The referees are looking at it. Chances are you're not gonna get that clean look. Alexis Montella just found that out. Rodriguez missing both free throws. And Durfee takes it back after a real tough rebound. Out to Simmons. BR looking a little bit quicker now with their press and their defense. Tough play, shot for Montilla, doesn't go. Stewart gets it back, now to Espinal. Great Threading ball. the needle. Simmons puts it up and in. Great job by Durfee, really getting good looks right now. They're yeah. not relying on the three. The threes will always be there. They're getting really good looks here. And Another it's steal. Identical again with these two flying up the floor. Not a good look for Espinal. Lost his balance a bit there. Kind of weak-sided a little bit. But you're right, and you know, this is the thing. Establish a game plan. Establish it early and get on the board. Don't just start throwing up bricks to start the night because that's where you're going to fall behind if they're not falling. Yeah, the three-pointers are always going to be there. You can get those on any possession. And the, ga the game has changed. The three-pointer yeah. is a major aspect of basketball. But... For these guys right here, it's real important to mm -hmm. see the ball go through, get their confidence going. And fast break lay is the best way to do it. Second timeout of this first quarter for 
Coach Alves and the Trojans, Durfee up 13-2. And the early goings were just over five minutes into the game. We got a correction, number 24 is DJ Overall, a right. sophomore, so we've got that correction. There we go. So DJ Overall is number 24, he was number two. So he had the foul, and that makes sense. Watching Overall during warm-ups and, and yep. in halftime of the JV game, he can really get up there. He was a rim rocker. <laughs> and only being a sophomore, he's got a bright future in sure. school basketball. And that's something Coach young, um, Coach Alves mentioned. They are a young team, BR. Um, but just another example of young doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to have a bad year. And, um, you know, he, he was quoting us before the game, which was kind of nice knowing that people are watching us. <laughs> and um, he said, you know, you guys were spot on, meaning when we were talking about how balanced the conference is this year. He totally agreed with us. So nice to know that we're... We're not the only ones seeing it that way. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know if a state champion is going to come out of the SEC, but I sure. do know that there's a lot of good coaches, and Doug Alves being the eldest statesman in the SEC, yep. he's been the, the, the longest of an SEC coach. There's a lot of good coaches. There's a lot of good basketball tradition, and this is one of the more balanced I've seen it, Durfee included. You know, I know we don't have a win in the conference right now, mm. but we're above 500. Our expectation is going to the playoffs, and this is this is a good basketball league, and it's exciting for the area. You know, I forgot that, you know, Coach Alves, this is his ninth season, and, um, you know, there was a time before we became conference opponents, and they were in the OC with Dartmouth and Barnstable, that you know we didn't always see BR every year. Um, you know we were we were picking some different games. We had New Bedford, Brockton, but you know we'd pick a Fian game, or we had Attleboro, or we had Somerset. We still try to do Somerset because it's such a good matchup. But there was a while we would do a North Attleboro. Yeah, you know, for us, you know, we looked at the matchups, and there were some really really tough BR teams during that time. So you know we. Admittedly, we've tried to pick some favorable matchups as well, or matchups that would be seen by a lot of people close by, hence the Somerset or, or Conley matchup. So we'd look at that strategically in, when we pick our coverage as well. Uh, so there were a few years that we didn't see BR consistently. Um, and, you know, I kind of forgot. So, wow, it's, it's been nine years. That's crazy. BR has had a rich basketball tradition forever. Um, just very good athletes, good basketball up there. Doug's done a great job for the last nine years. And like I said, he's the eldest statesman in the, in the, the conference. He's not long-tenured coaches in the conference. I think no. Matt Hill would probably be next at New Bedford. Yeah. Coach DeCruz um, and Manny DeBarros at Brockton. And then obviously Nick Simonetti, who's doing an unbelievable job yeah, Dartmouth at is Dartmouth. Surreal. I mean, <laughs> he's got to get some considerations. Division II Coach of the Year. He's, I you know, this still another part of the season, but I'm really happy for him. He's done a great job. Espinal with the three. Espinal off to a really good shot, uh, really good start. He's just a, a, a real good shooter, volume shooter. He gets him in bunches, doesn't hesitate. Alexis Montilla very engaged on the defensive end. Did you see though, he dropped back. I think he thought he was maybe gonna get called on a foul and then didn't get the whistle and said, all right, loose ball, <laughs> let's go for it. But the initial reaction, I think he thought maybe he was gonna get a whistle. Durfee's defense has been stellar in this first quarter. They've been hitting some shots, which is good. Not a cold start, which we kind of feared with the late start. But for BR, definitely a cold start, just a now two from the field. Great seal by BR. Nice little slip pass in there. BR goes that two for one. That was Katogio. 30 seconds left in the opening quarter. And Durfee does, to your point, Hilltoppers, this is about as lively as we've seen them in any first quarter this season. Nice pick in the air by Stewart, and he puts it up and in. That's probably the best ball movement sequence yeah. that I've seen all year, too. We talk about this quite often. Durfee can get stale offensively with a lot of, you know, one pass, dribble. That was great ball movement. BR, I'm not sure if they realize the clock. No. 
Great start for Durfee, 18-4. Yeah. Sign me up for that for a starting quarter anytime. And I know you are the time person here. That was a very fast moving first <laughs> quarter. <laughs> that come a lot faster than any of the JV quarters we watched. <laughs> yeah, this was uh, very, very good self-awareness yeah. by the referees and Coach Alves and Coach DeCruz keeping, keeping it moving in the first quarter. I I'm thoroughly impressed. I'm very happy. Um, you know, I, I think now, so here's a big key, right? You just got a really good start against a really good opponent. Arguably one of Durfee's best starts in our coverage this season. Now can you sustain it, and can you adjust to what they're going to do to change up their, their game plan? Because obviously the, the Trojans are going to make some adjustments here. They're not getting shots. They're getting serious pressure defensively. So now are you able, as Durfee, after a great start, are you able to continue to compete and roll with those punches, the changes that they're gonna throw at you? I think that's gonna be a major key here for as we hit the second quarter, and that'll really tell the story before halftime. Yeah, going back a week ago against Somerset, they did do this. Yes. If I'm Coach Alves in the BR bench, I'm telling our guys on a, on a positive note that this is a little bit, it feels a lot, it feels a lot louder than it actually is. You know, 14 points, not a lot in high school basketball anymore. It's obviously not the ideal start, but, you know, we're keeping these guys' confidence high. They are out of a little routine, not the start they wanted, but it feels a little louder. On the Durfee end, you're 100% right. They've got to keep it going because 14 is, is not. No, it's not going to do it. That's a foul. It'll be Durfee's second. That's the other thing. We only saw two fouls in that first quarter, one for each team. Yeah, the natural flow of a game is, is not going to be one or two fouls in each quarter. I mean, the aggressiveness is going to get going up. Referees did a great job of kind of establishing a flow of a game after waiting for so long, but that's not going to be the case any longer. You know, they're, they're going to start calling it a little bit tighter, and, you know, Durfee's going to have to do a good job of not getting excited. That does go. Got a favorable bounce for Katogio, and uh, that gives BR... One free throw on the night in four chances. Small sample size there. But. Here's our first adjustment by Bridgewater Rainham. They've got their defense extended up a little bit higher. And mm -hmm. Looks like a 1-2-2 two, two trapping on the corners. Now Durfee's going to have to, you know, make a little bit better choices on the defense, uh, the offensive end. That'll work. Stewart with a great 15-footer, a lost off. Dribble off the deck, mid-range jumper. He has an old school flair to his game. That was a great hit. Simmons, what he does best with a very, very great possession. Simmons uh, put up a three, missed it, and that's what allowed Stewart to get the ball back and uh, put up the jumper, and then that steal right there. Four straight for Durfee. You've said it quite often this season that this is a very quick Durfee team. We're seeing that. Open three, looks good, is off to the right though. No good, loose ball. Stewart picks it up. Montilla, you gotta credit his hands on that one. He jarred it loose and was able to tip it away. Now he wants three and it's no good. Hard off the rim, Montella's, kicks off two. Montella smiling too, he <laughs> has a little bit of a heat check. Not known for his outside shooting. He wanted no, to try and get one. You never see that, that's a foul. Durfee's got to do a better job. Once they get into that dotted circle area right there, they're, they're following too much. This is, that's the, the wrong formula to slow the game down, not in their pace, yeah. and let Bridgewater rain them. It's a two out of the last three defensive times. It's gotten below the basket, and Durfee's just following. And well, luckily for uh, the Hilltoppers, the Trojans have missed five of the, uh, four of the first five shots, so that's, that's four points left on the floor as well. But you're right, to me, that you're behind the player that's an open open layup. They only have two from the field in 10 minutes of play. Let him take the shot. Two free throws missed, Montilla. They call it a lane violation? No, a little extracurricular on, Brid on Bridgewater Raynham. Or no, it's Montilla. Montilla picks up his second. It's 22, it's not Simmons, 22. Nope. It's Montilla. Well, I think they're giving it to Simmons. Here we go. This is something that you and I have been very consistent on 
throughout the year is our uh, misinterpretation of fouls. Wa maybe watching too much with our eyes and not what the officials are doing. <laughs> Bridgewater Rainham has got their zone extended. It's a traditional 1-2-2 two, two, ready to trap right at the corner. Great skip pass. That's a great pass by Espinal. A nice, nice way of breaking these kind of junk zones is kind of go long pass for long pass. It's not probably what they teach you, but it's a great way to do it. Three from the corner. Espinal feeling it in this first half. He's already up to 12 points. They come in bunches for him, and when he's feeling it, the basket looks real big for him. That's got to be a foul. Hilltopper's lucky there, they got away with one. Durfee hasn't blocked out once, and you can see it right there. You can't give a basketball team at this time of year four opportunities. <laughs> and watching, there wasn't one block out that entire possession. No. And I think that's where the size game may hurt you. Lucas, hard off the rim, Stewart. Battling for, they call a jump ball. The ball was between their thighs. Nobody had their hands on it. But nonetheless, dual possession called. Should be Durfee ball. The, the, the table has it at Durfee. Should be a clean clock as well. 33 seconds on the shot clock. I'm not sure why it hasn't set. Yeah, you're right. If it's a dual possession, you reset the shot clock. Stewart's gonna go to the line. Durfee kind of going Iron Man right now. Same starters in, and why not? The great start. Let them let them go a little bit. I've always said 17, 18 year olds. They, this time of year they should be in shape. Should <laughs> be getting tired by any stretch. No, and don't take people out of the game if you're getting production and no one's in foul trouble. Don't start pulling guy if they're things are working been a very good first 11 minutes here at the field house one of the most underrated things coaching wise people think it's easy when they're sitting on this side but <laughs> understanding the flow of the game and letting these guys go yeah especially the guards right now they're off to really really good starts and yeah, they're focused making shots you want to ride this for as long as you can tough shot good rebound there from Perry Lewis three is gonna be no good Looked like uh, Kotogio might have been held a little bit on that exchange by Stewart, but no foul called. Durfee with it. Oh, he's gonna take this, that's, oh, it goes! I thought that was gonna be short, you kidding me? I can't believe that went in. Simmons keeping him honest right now. This is, again, yeah. they're, they're feeling it right now. Ride this. Durfee's got to understand this is a very big game for them right now, and I don't care what Bridgewater Raynham's record is. Montilla with the block, batting the ball away. Thanks to some pressure from Stewart behind. The shot clock is way off again right now. It's not a nine second. Yeah, table. I don't know what's going on the table at the table. The table but. needs to get it going a little bit. Great extra possession for Jaleel Simmons. That was, a, that was a nine second, that was not a full 35. We haven't seen a lot of 35 second <laughs> possessions this year. <laughs> Durfee did have a, a stop last week though against Somerset where they held Somerset 35 seconds and it was a shot clock violation. Yeah, those should be worth, those should be worth two by now. Yeah, really. Hard to play defense without making any mistakes for 30, let alone 35 seconds. <laughs> Even harder to execute for full 35 without making a mistake, too. <laughs> Montilla picking up his second foul, fifth team foul, and Golden at the line. Durfee's got to do a better job blocking out right now because this is where guys in a nice flow can find themselves on the bench with foul trouble just by not blocking out and not kind of paying attention to the details on the defensive side. It's Cameron DeMello, Jr. Yeah, Montilla's out. Comes in right now. Some extended minutes for Cam. He did a nice job against Somerset. He's going to play his role, rebound the ball. As Lucas picks up a loose one. Right on the edge of the baseline, Lucas able to get there. Tough move, kicks it out to Espinal. 
too crowded on this side of the floor. Durfee's gonna do a better job of spacing. Espinol with a good shot. Spin move by Perry Lewis, and he takes it back. Very quick move, good job by Bridgewater Raynham of settling off, not kind of going out of control. Referee back to the table, the shot clock just now getting reset again, delayed. And we're off again as well. We're about four or five seconds off on this one and never reset. So many things going on coaching wise right now. I'm not sure if they're paying attention to it. It shouldn't be a big deal, but. The mellow battling down low. Great close out by Lucas. Durfee needs a good possession right here. Keep it, keep it coming. Tough shot, great block from Katogio and the Trojans are taking it back. Perry Lewis with the three. Two minutes left to go, Durfee really having a great first half. It's closeout time right now. They wanna go into the half feeling well. Don't give Bridgewater Rain a momentum going into the halftime adjustments. This is very important closeout time for Durfee. Yeah, you know, you put in a basket or two here over the final minute 40, if you're Durfee, you know, get up to maybe 36 points or so, which is, they're gonna lose the ball here. But, you know, you, you gotta do that. You can't let BR get to 20 here and you stay at 32. That gives them seven point run and gives them, you know, some, it gives them some confidence going into the locker room. You gotta close out. I think your point is extremely valid here. You can't take these final 90 seconds for granted. And if Bridgewater Raynham goes in only down 10, they feel good about themselves. Yeah, they haven't exactly. played particularly well on the road, haven't shot the ball well at all. And you go in only 10, BI is gonna feel real good about themselves. Durfee looking for instant offense. Lamore right into the ball games, had a great year coming off the bench. Espinal. Big shot by Espinal. Kids going off tonight. 15 first half points for Jaden Espinal on the lead, back up to 20. Very important minute for Durfee defensively. No fouls. Don't put BR at the free throw line. No, take the two point jumper and come back the other way, take a shot. Golden with the basket. Tough take there from Lucas. Durfee gets it back to Mello. Should be Hilltopper's ball and it is. Good job getting that second opportunity by kind of a combination of Stewart and DeMello. 22 on the shot clock. Looks to be a, a normal shot clock. Yeah, I've been, I've been keeping an eye now. It's been back to normal here. We, we got it figured out, I think. DeMello with a tough shot. And it'll be a foul on the floor. Good job by Cameron DeMello. Is that DeMello against DeMello? Being, yes. Yeah. Good job by DeMello being aggressive trying to make something happen. You get these extended minutes, you want to keep the flow going. Shot clock is off, so we do not have to worry about. <laughs> well, worst case here is if BR gets a three, Hilltoppers would still lead by 15 going into the half. That's better than 10, and it would be a great first half for the Hilltoppers. Cotogio gonna go to the basket. Hilltoppers will have a chance to put another basket in here. Five seconds. Look out, close. They go to Lucas. Great move. Oh, it Good won't go. <laughs> it won't go, but what a fantastic first half for the Hilltoppers. A 35-19 advantage as they head into the locker rooms for the break. Good bounce back quarter, 15 points in the second for BR, but the Hilltoppers really continue to hit shots. The key here for uh, BR, Katogio had seven points in that quarter. Yeah, Durfee's gonna, again, they're gonna have to make sure they're ready for Bridgewater Raynham's adjustments. Durfee's gonna have to be able to make their own. You know, this is it's still second half of basketball to be played. Two good teams here, but echo your statement. Great first half by Durfee. Shots falling. Gonna keep it up in the second half. Brendan and I will step away for the halftime break. A very fast first half. A lot of rhythm, right? 
lot of momentum, fast play, we love that. We'll be back with the third quarter. Stay tuned, more live basketball after this. Watupa Rowing Center is uniquely located on South Watupa Pond in Fall River, the only school of its kind in the region, tuition free and open to all. At Watupa Rowing Center, we're really looking for you. There's so much potential here, guys. Like, you can be a part of something so cool. South Watupa is a non-tidal freshwater pond large enough to accommodate a six-lane race course. For most of the year, we are out on the water, and during the winter months, our rowers head inside for strength and conditioning. I thought it would be a good idea just to try it, and I came here and now I'm stuck, I guess. <laughs> I love it. We like to have athletes that, or kids that like, want to learn to row, no matter the background, because that is how you get the diversification. This is a sport that can fit anybody who wants to do it. Our schedule is flexible. When you are ready, we are here. We want to make you the best you can be. We're kind of up and coming. What we want is to make sure that rowing is accessible to anybody and everybody who wants to try it. From your first practice to your first regatta, our experienced coaches will be there to support and encourage you. I've been looking for a new hobby, so I tried it out on um, the summer program and I really liked it. At first it's going to seem real hard, but the more that you do it, the easier it gets. Student rowers learn hard work, dedication and integrity, vital skills that directly transfer to real life off the water. Crew is the ultimate team sport. Ready and go! When we get in that boat, we know we all have to watch out for each other, make sure we're all doing our jobs, because each part of the boat has their own job. And if you're not doing your job, then someone else is gonna suffer. Rowing can be another course to higher education. You might even be eligible for scholarships. Our goal for us as coaches, right, is to like build that foundation right now, get those kids, get high school kids, get middle school kids that might like to do it, and hopefully they love the sports as much as we do, that they want to take it to the next level. At Watupa Rowing Center, there is so much to see, so much to learn, and so much to love, and it's right here where you live. For more information, visit our website at watupparowingcenter.org. Fall River Public Schools has opportunities for positions in multiple areas for people looking to work with the next generation. Come grow with our team. We have openings for teachers, paraprofessionals and teaching assistants, and other educational support positions available. We are also looking to fill operations support positions such as custodial, security, and food service. We offer competitive salary and benefit plans. We have rewarding work available in our 21st century schools and learning environments. Come grow with us. Please contact the Human Resources Department at 508-675-8420, extension 53708, or see our postings on our website at fallriverschools.org. Hello, my name is Laura Ferreira, the Director of Traffic and Parking. During a snowstorm, your safety is our first priority. At times, a parking ban may be necessary to ensure access for emergency vehicles and to allow plows to clear streets. A general rule is park on the side of the street opposite the fire hydrant. For more information, please visit our website at www.fallriverma.org and search parking ban. In addition, you may call the mayor's office at 508-324-2600 or the Office of Traffic and Parking at 508-324-2123. New England weather can be unpredictable. Notification of a parking ban will be made early to give residents the opportunity to move their vehicles. Thank you for your assistance and cooperation. Hi, I'm Kristen Cantara Oliveira. I'm a member of the Community Preservation Committee and the Historical Commission. Welcome to the Lafayette Durfee House. 
I'm David Jennings, curator, built in 1750. This is one of the best living history representations in Massachusetts. Judge Thomas Durfee, the original owner, was also an admired patriot. Judge Durfee made sizable purchases of equipment and weapons to outfit Revolutionary War soldiers, including his own son. Generals and Minutemen frequently met here for secret and strategic military planning. But by the 1970s, the home's significance was largely forgotten and it was slated for demolition. Preservationists rallied, first to fund the restoration and secondly to resurrect interest in the heroic Durfee family. The original frame and foundation are intact. Craftsmen work tediously to repair or replace decorative elements. Visitors are encouraged to handle artifacts and work alongside artists. The Lafayette Turfey House is included in the National Register of Historic Buildings and exceeds standards of the Secretary of the Interior. However, time continuously ravages the one-of-a-kind structure. Grants from the Community Preservation Committee, as well as monetary contributions, spearhead the efforts of tireless volunteers. CPA funds have supported thousands of significant projects in Massachusetts. Thank you for your continued interest in community beautification and betterment. Fall River Public Schools has opportunities for positions in multiple areas for people looking to work with the next generation. Come grow with our team. We have openings for teachers, paraprofessionals and teaching assistants, and other educational support positions available. We are also looking to fill operations support positions such as custodial, security, and food service. We offer competitive salary and benefit plans. We have rewarding work available in our 21st century schools and learning environments. Come grow with us. Please contact the Human Resources Department at 508-675-8420, extension 53708, or see our postings on our website at fallriverschools.org. The Gothic Revival style arch at Oak Grove Cemetery signals the final resting place of some of Fall River's most prominent residents. Since 1873, thousands of funeral processions have passed through these ornate iron gates. War heroes, abolitionists, mill owners, and Lizzie Borden are buried within these walls. Despite fine craftsmanship and historical recognition, the arch was unable to withstand time and the elements and was in danger of collapse. 10 years ago, Fall River residents voted to adopt the Community Preservation Act, which allows for a 1.5% surcharge on property tax bills. This cherished landmark was saved with funds through the Community Preservation Act. In just five months, this time using some modern machinery, local contractors refurbished the granite arch and replaced sections of the gate. A uniquely Fall River work of art and a respectful reflection for the dead has been saved for future generations. CPA funds have supported thousands of significant projects in Massachusetts. Thank you for your continued interest in community beautification and betterment. Welcome back to Durfee, everybody, as we get ready for the second half here. About to begin the third quarter. Rocking out to the who as we come back from the break. All requests live, Eric Gomes, <laughs> halftime. <laughs> Send them a text, get the song you want. Gonna mix it up a little bit. Out of bounds, that will not count. Espinal trying to establish himself right away in the second half. Technically, it went in. We had a <laughs> it's not a miss. <laughs> top, top, top of the backboard, out of bounds. Right. <laughs> Another good reach there, Montia, fighting to get free, and he is fouled. There was a lot of contact there as he was fighting to get himself free, and the Trojans, who had just two fouls in the first half, Rodriguez had one of them. As he gets hit with his second, this is the first team foul 
for BR. A rear off night tomorrow for Durfee. Friday night, no hoops, huh? Well, they're playing here Saturday against Snowden. And Snowden, of course, coming from the Boston area as Simmons with another from outside. He's up to 10. Simmons doing a great job on the outside. Not typically his game. He's the type of guy that gets a lot of his points going to the basket and getting the hustle points. He's hit a few. That's an unbelievable oh. pass by Espinal. Even better finish by Lucas. Great, great flick. Hope the, oh, Coach DeCruz has got to get that on the huddle for him yeah. tonight. That, that's an unbelievable pass. I want to see that one a second time. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, you want them to come out quick here in the third quarter, a 5 nothing run out of the locker room. Sets three. I think that was tipped. Kind of looked slow coming out of his hands. That was Luke Barry. And Durfee takes it back. So, yeah, Snowden there on Saturday. And, um, and then for Durfee, let's see. After Saturday, they will be on the road for two next week. Attleboro and Brockton, two really tough games. I'd be curious to see how they play in that new Attleboro gym from everything I've seen. That's right, heard, new school. Absolutely beautiful. The old Attleboro was one of the toughest gyms I would play in and coach in. Yeah. I, I hated We've it. Been, we were there. <laughs> I, I hated it. It was, as a player, a very tough gym to play in. I always felt like it was dark. Yeah. And... Very small too Tough. for the size for you know for the type of school very small gym yeah, and they could, could they could pack it in there though and when I right. was in high school they were coming off a state championship in 1998 they would pack that place yeah. they were tremendous those teams afterwards and then coaching there we played in 2016 in the state tournament mm -hmm. there they I had remember. a very good team and before any ten players all on the floor at the same time they were they were very good so. I know that new gym is, is spacious. It's not as cookie cutter as some of the other schools. From what I've seen from pictures, um, I've, I've heard it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Tough place to play regardless. Sure. And then of course Brockton is, you know, absolutely brutal to play at. As Bridgewater Rainham's going kind of man to man, this could definitely fall into Durfee's favor. I don't care for Brockton's gym. We, we did a playoff game there. Was that actually your last year coaching? Shay's, uh, Shaylin's. 2018, I've been yeah. a part of uh, a South sectional semifinal there when I was on the boys staff in 2009. We played Newton North there. Uh, I actually, my first year at Case, one of the neutral sites with the big three schools, it was great. Yeah. It was super comfortable there. We yeah. play there all the time. Yeah. So. Well, it was, you know, from a from a broadcast standpoint, they don't open the bleachers on the other, other side, like behind the teams so and behind the scoreboard. So we were like a mile away from the action. It was really tough to see what was going on. Um, and you know, courtside tables were either not available or weren't offered, I forget, but we were not, we were near the camera. You know, you can't film right on the side court. So it, it, was, it was challenging to, uh, to call a game there. That will go for Lucas, who's up to nine points. I tell you what though, here, and we haven't seen the bleachers kind of squaring the, 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 the I gym know. off. I but love it. New Bedford High, Brockton, and this gym, when you have this at a standing room only capacity crowd. Travel called on a basketball move to the hoop. A little outdated call. The Euro <laughs> step has been around for a little while now is common practice. Some referees still jump at. Yeah, really. The travel, and I thought that was relatively clean by Stewart. So the basket off the board, but still three and a half minutes into the third quarter, an eight nothing run for the Hilltoppers out of the half. And Durfee takes it back again. Lucas trying to go coast to coast. He lost control of the ball, and Stewart unable to grab it off the knees. But exactly the start that you wanted if you're Durfee. And second time they've done a really good job below mm -hmm. that dotted line. Not a strength for Durfee defensively. They've done a good job with that. Simmons really engaged oh, going to the basket. Go. Gets the rebound and now loses it, trying to pass it off. Julius Simmons looks like he has a second gear when he can really turn on the Jets. Montilla loses it, gets tripped up, tumbling down. 
they're feeling a little helter skelter the last few offensive possessions. They really slow need to down. slow down. Lucas realizes and does a good job. You're on an eight nothing run for four plus minutes here, half a quarter. Take it, take it down a notch. He hits another from outside. You'd see it from the start of the game. Maybe it's the number change. <laughs> Maybe Lucas is now up to 11. That's three Hilltoppers in double figures as the Trojans finally get on the board. Four and a half minutes into the quarter. Luke Barry with the three. That's a long drought coming out of the locker room. If you're BR, off balance from Espinal. That was sweet. You talk about consistency and bringing it every night. When these guards are engaged and are obviously making in shots, Durfee's as good as anybody in this area and in Division I. Well, it's a consistency thing, right? We talked about it early in the game. Coach DeCruz telling me it. He's been saying it all season. They need consistency, and that's where, that's when they get into trouble, when they're not being consistent and doing their, playing to their strengths. Tonight, last week against Somerset, we've, we've seen Durfee's strengths in full force. Stolen, beautiful play by Barry, who's all of a sudden woken up. And a timeout for the Hilltoppers. Oh, Detroit, excuse me. I thought Coach DeCruz motioned for the timeout, but Coach Shea with the timeout. Dougie trying to rally him one more time. We, about 10 minutes to go in the game. Stranger things have happened. He's in this huddle right now. Yeah. Really, really trying to push them for one last push. You're trying to get this down realistically in the two and a half minutes, realistically, if you can get it down to 14, give yourself a chance in that fourth quarter. Durfee's just gonna keep their, their foot on the gas. It's really been as complete as Somerset was Friday night. This is more impressive. Yeah, be, because it's come right from the start and a lot of it's come on the defensive end and them getting up and using their speed as an advantage. So it's been a real nice night for Durfee. They're just going to close it out. Well, you've got to take into account as well, and, and you know, I don't want anybody to take it the wrong way, but we got to talk about caliber of opponent as well. Somerset is not a D1 team. So that's a big part of this too, to, to put up this kind of a performance through, you know, over two and a half quarters. is still a lot of gameplay yet, but to, to put on this kind of a show against a team like BR, who has really had Durfee's number over the last few seasons, this is, this is an impressive performance so far tonight. And with everybody just about ready to start seeing everybody for the second time around in the league, I mean, there's, there's a lot to be settled in the league right now. And the Dartmouth's off to the early start, but starting next week, mm -hmm. we're gonna start seeing everybody for that second time, getting into February break. February break's three weeks away. The you know, state tournament's four weeks away. I know, it's pretty crazy when but you think about it. As fast as the fall went, here we are in the middle of winter. Well, you know, we haven't had snow. We haven't had any weather issues. We've Every game's been played as scheduled on time. I mean, that makes the season go by pretty quickly too when you're not getting backlogged and waiting for games to be played. Everyone's playing as it was scheduled. At least down here it is. We haven't seen barely any snow. No, I mean, you drive into the games, the, the sun's still there. It's, it's yeah. starting to feel like that time of year, so. We talk about consistency. Teams now that are consistent you know, are going to find their way playing in March. Mm -hmm. Simmons with his third foul will take a seat and we'll see Lamont, um, Avante Lamore for the first time tonight. Quick jumper for Lucas who's hitting everything under the sun. Oh, Espinal, my bad. Espinal, well he's also hitting everything under the sun. 50-25 the score, 19 points for Jaden. Montilla again defensively making it happen, but now the Trojans take it back. Barry getting some help from Mike Rain. Misses the shot, high flip to Espinal. Open three, got it! That was one of those heat checks by Jaden Espinal, but he is feeling it right now. The ball is coming out of his hand real well. Four from downtown for Great Espinal. Great look by Barry. That was uh, overall with the basket. 
Murphy with a nice job being patient against Bridgewater Raynham's half court press. Corner. Bridgewater Raynham leaving. Another Espinal three. Wide open. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm not sure how Bridgewater Raynham missed that assignment right there. He had, he had the first look too off the ball fake, the second look. He is really feeling it right now. The miss out of bounds, Durfee ball. Three, six, nine, 12, 15, 17, 19, 21, 23, 25 for Espinal. This is without a doubt one of his better shooting. He's had a few really good shooting performances this year. This is right up there. This is ridiculous. He's going off tonight. And you know he's gonna try to pull one right now. <laughs> As a shooter, you definitely have that heat check right now. And that's no. gonna give Lamar an unbelievable opportunity to get into the game. I was gonna say, Mr. Three off the bench. Lamar, Lamar didn't get it though. Lamar's had such a great year for Durfee. It's tough. Yeah. Tonight hasn't had many opportunities. It's the other two guards, Lucas and Espinoff, have just been playing so well. It's just how it rolls sometimes during the season. There's no doubt in my mind as you know, as a good teammate, he understands that. They get in the bigger picture right now. Four seconds left to go. Lucas, tough drive to the basket. Draws a foul with less than a second on the clock, and he's going to take two. Very impressed with Durfee's late clock management. End of the second quarter and now just, just now. Doing a nice job of getting the clock all the way down mm -hmm. and getting a quality look. Seems like all the things that you and I have harped on over the last couple games um, have been addressed at least to some extent here tonight and even Somerset last week. Well, as we're getting some feedback back live on there, people are listening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One for two at the line is Lucas and the Hilltoppers have increased their lead to 30 points. After three quarters, a 57 to 27 lead. Durfee put up 22 points in the third and held BR to just eight. This is a great sign for Durfee. One of the things that's kind of been their Achilles heel is coming out of halftime. Yep. Throwing that first punch or keeping the momentum from the first half. Mm -hmm. That's a great sign for Durfee moving forward, coming out of halftime, and in my opinion, playing better basketball the yeah. third quarter. Well, Their you, best basketball. You've mentioned it. You always get nervous when they come out of the locker room at halftime so soon because you figure, like, you know, you're going to keep putting up shots and, like, save it for the game, right? <laughs> and uh, But not tonight. It hasn't, hasn't affected them at all. Well, that's coming from me. Sometimes I would stay in the locker room too late. <laughs> My father used to joke all the time. He said he didn't understand how we didn't start every third quarter off with a technical foul because we'd come out of the locker room mistimed. <laughs> Might have my assistants, usually your assistants are standing in front of you and then they'll throw up a nine, eight, seven. They keep their clock running so you have an idea and I would just wave my assistants off and just, I guess the gift of the gab, we would stay in the locker room. <laughs> Luckily we didn't start many third quarters with a tech, but sure. my father was he not, keep not, it, not he sure, kept an eye for Not you. sure how we didn't. That and coming out of timeouts, too. I always try to get that extra 10 seconds out of timeouts. <laughs> well, I'll tell you one thing. The Hilltoppers did not allow, and he really wasn't out there too much either, surprisingly. I don't know if there's an injury or something, but Katogio, who had nine points for BR in the second quarter, nine of their 15, by the way, Oh, excuse me, seven of their 15, so half the points. He sat the bench basically the entire third quarter, and he's not out there now. So, so uh, he's definitely established himself. I know. In the painted area, you're getting some decent looks. So I'm wondering if he's maybe dealing with an injury. Um, Kotogio is a sophomore. You know, he's, I, I don't recall that he had any minutes. He did not. In, um, in JV as uh, Milford into the game, picks up a foul away from the ball. He just came in. Chris is a high energy guy. He's had a nice season coming off the bench. Really, really high motor. Great kid, plays real hard. One of my volleyball players, expecting big things out of him this year. Mm -hmm. Big time extended role. So Milford in for Lucas 
Espinal, Montilla, and, and uh, Stewart, the lone starters remaining in the game. Montilla puts it back up, and he's going to go to the free throw line. This is probably the best rebounding game I've seen Alexis Montilla. I mean, he's a great rebounder. That's what he does. That's his value to this team. But I feel like he's been really engaged today, getting his hands on a lot. Kevin Lambert, number 35, getting the foul for the Trojans. I would agree with you, Montilla has had a little extra stretch and reach for every possession as he misses the first free throw. He's only got two points tonight. Those two points came at the line way back in the first. He'll add to it here with one more free throw. What's great about Montilla is that he knows his role. Mm -hmm. And he's not going to give you, on most nights, double figures. And he sure is not going to go for 20 or 30, which a lot of basketball players these days think is the only way to be successful in basketball. He's carved out an unbelievable role for himself the last two years. He's made himself super valuable to have on the floor. And he's a big part of the reason Durfee's had two successful seasons the last year. I mean, we're in the midst of a successful season and we're looking for more, but you almost wish more high school players would look at him, really find something to do, do it to the best of their ability, not worry about you know, highlight culture, and you know, I think we'd be better teams as Milford. Wow. I see a lot of that in Christopher Milford as well. That was a tremendous play there. Great block from the Trojans defense. Milford got it back, put it up and in on the weak side. 60 to 29 is the score. Nice inbound pass. Quick jumper from Balutis. No good. Cut off. That's not a great pass. You can afford it when, with the score the way it is, but not a good pass there. Lamar gets the, the ball off the rebound, batted away, and he'll take it to the basket, coast to coast. Great job by Avante Lamar. The coach and me want to say, pull it out, pull it out, pull it out, but nobody stopped him. Went right yeah. to the rim and go till somebody stops you. So great job. Durfee's just going to try to be as, as clean as possible these last six minutes get out of here with a much needed SEC win. Rodriguez with the basket for the Trojans. Bridgewater Random is gonna play right to the end. Pressing a little bit, trying to make Durfee rush a little bit. Durfee defensively right now with five minutes, 44 seconds to go in the game, holding a very good basketball team, 31 points. It's a great job. We, and we, we've been humming on the offensive out output, I mean, equally the defense has yeah. been oh, yeah. one of their better performances. Yeah, again, when you consider size, a divisional opponent, conference opponent, I mean, you put all those factors together. And and like I said, you know, Durfee has not done well against BR over the last few years. They're right up there with Brockton, you know, always a thorn in our side. And, uh, you know, this has to feel good for Durfee. Again, we're talking about confidence boosters. Yeah. But we got to string them together. It can't just be. Oh, it doesn't go. Nice move by Lamore, but not enough on it. No, you're right. That's the whole thing is Somerset felt great. Sure, this feels great. But now you, you got to put a few together. You have to. Snowden, we always do pretty well against Snowden. We tend to play them annually just for one game here or there. And Lamore looking for a corner three, and he's got it. Gonna keep that quota, you know. <laughs> Snowden is another, another team very well coached. Coach Rogers, some local ties. Right, but we tend to do. We've done well against Snowden. It's yep. interesting. Durfee's had good success against them over the last few years. Yeah, so they're a good team. They're coming off a Final Four appearance a year I know. ago. I mean, this is another thing. We can't look at teams, look at records. Right. You have to go and play between the lines, and. You know, this was with Bridgewater Radom's record. It's hearing a little bit too much at school. It's like, oh, BR is not that good this year, or, you know, BR's record is whatever it is. Nice pass oh. by Stewart. Sherry and, couldn't handle. You know, it doesn't matter. This is a good basketball program, rich tradition, well coached, good players. You have to go and you have to play in between the lines yeah. every night. And that's going to have to be the same thing with Snowden on. 
on, on, on Saturday. Well, again, Snowden Saturday, then at Attleboro and at Brockton. It ain't getting any easier. No, there's, there's no room for error here. If Durfee hangs on, up by 30. I mean, it, and Durfee's going to do a good job, too, of not playing this game of, well, let's just get 10 and make the tournament, and that's our, that's our qualification and yeah. that's our goal. We want to keep playing well and, you know, see what happens. You know, last year drew a, a home game, and I believe we were under 32 a year ago, or we were just at that 28-29. I'll have to look at the archives. Yeah. But we got a home game against Marshfield, and we played great, and, and for a... Half the game, we were right there with, with Franklin. So we don't yeah. want to just play this, like, get to 10, check off a box, and that's our season. We no. want to keep getting better. Espinel still in the game. Yeah, he's played basically the entire game. I don't think he's had any rest. Stewart is not, uh, he's, in the, he's on the bench now. Uh, Josh Sainan into the game. DJ Glover into the game, Ben Sherry into the game. Yeah, Christopher es from Milford still in the game, start of the fourth quarter. So Espinal, the only starter mm. still in there right now. So Montilla and Stewart on the bench, most likely for the remainder here. Yeah, it's the first free throw from Robijo is good. And that one, no good. Three shots here. Haven't seen this in a while. <laughs> the foul on a three-point attempt. He gets two points out of it. Two for three at the line. 65-39. Three and a half to go here at Durfee on this Thursday night. Sainan puts up the three, no good. Espinal in the game, we talked about last Friday, just for ball handler, being a primary ball handler to keep things organized. Yeah, and as I, a, you, you gotta keep somebody in there, some playmaker in there for sure. And as a coach, you, you, he's a couple baskets away. You know, 30's a real nice opportunity for a high school kid. And we're seeing that right now as a primary ball handler. Bridgewater Rain is going to play hard right to the, the buzzer here, making it tough for Durfee. 21 on the shot clock. We have a carry. Next week, uh, well, actually, let's take a look at B. We mentioned Durf Durfee schedule. BR after tonight. They're home on the third. Okay, so they're not playing until next Friday. They got a whole week off. That's for two and a timeout as uh, Jake Golden puts it in. So time out here and we'll take a look at the schedule, the upcoming schedule that is. Let me adjust the score here as well. 43 points after that basket for BR. So the Trojans now have just over a week off. They play next Friday versus New Bedford. Then they hit the road and they go to Franklin on Sunday the 5th for a two o'clock game. Come back home on Tuesday the 7th against Zavarian. And then at Brockton on the ninth, so a really tough schedule for for BR. Even I'd say more challenging than Durfee's. Um, they lost to Severian. They've lost to New Bedford. They beat Brockton, and this is one game against Franklin. They have not seen Franklin. This is a one and done. I'll tell you this about Franklin. CJ Neely's got them at the top of the state once what again. <laughs> what else is new? One of the <laughs> premier basketball programs in the state, one of the premier athletic programs in the state, and they are right there. Mm. I believe the last I looked, nine or 10 and all, or 11 and one, somewhere in that field, and they're, they're at the top of Division One again. Next week on Fred TV, uh, no live broadcasts next week, uh, but we will have some stuff some events recorded as well. Kind of a light week um, with regards to sports before the final two full weeks here that we'll have before the winter break. So next week we will have senior night coverage of swimming and diving. Our students are filming that. 
on Wednesday, that swim meet against Bishop Conley. So we'll have that airing on Thursday. Lamore with another three. Lamore up to eight. Not a ton of uh, looks tonight, but he's gonna find his way close to double figures again. Another timeout called by Coach Alves. So we'll break again here. Um, and then on Thursday, a week from tonight, middle school hoops invade the field house. And uh, we'll be getting highlights of both the girls and boys championship games. And we're not going live for that? No. Those, will be, those are gonna be highlights for uh, featured down the road the following week when we return to live action. Um, first full week of February, Monday the 6th, Tuesday the 7th, Wednesday the 8th. Back to back to back nights. Boys from Diamond, girls from here, girls from Diamond, and then I'm on the road Friday, girls, Durfee girls at Dartmouth. So very busy first full week of February and it continues the week before President's Day and the week before the break. Monday, hockey at Dartmouth. That's another DT DCTV game that I'll be doing. Then back home, boys here against New Bedford, girls home against BR, and then ice hockey, senior night at Driscoll. So two hockey games in one week. So we got a big bunch of games. We're basically gonna get to see everybody one time before the end of the regular season. Um, starting February 1st, really. So nice mix of games and events that uh, you know, we're looking forward to, to bringing to you here on Fred TV. How about the, the season, uh, the co-op Diamond and Durfee Hockey? It's great to see them have some success. It really is. And um, you know, proud of the kids for really sticking through it. And you know, two different schools, no, not traditional rivals, but there's a rivalry between Durfee and, and, and Diamond. And putting on the same jersey, it's great. It's great for the kids, great for the community. Really yeah. happy that it's working out. Oh, I am too. You know, Coach Robinson from Durfee, Coach O'Connor from Diamond, um, both praising the players and saying, you know, how great the locker room is. I mean, you know, you have guys that have to, you know, maybe losing a starting position because they have to share with a team, you know, share time on the ice, and no one's being selfish. Um, you know, we saw a tough loss in December on opening night to a Poniquit, but the two January games we did were tremendous hockey games. One of them was an overtime thriller that, you know, finished at the buzzer, basically a buzzer beater goal uh, for Diamond. I mean, really tremendous. So. We've seen some great hockey, and the two Dartmouth games ought to be a lot of fun. Dartmouth's got a good program. They, they always do. Well, it's going to be great to have normal numbers. Yeah. You know, for the last, I don't know how many years it is, especially at Durfee, you're, you're playing with such short numbers yeah. and not knowing a lot of the strategy around hockey. I can't imagine that's easy when you don't have the depth. And now to have normal depth, have a JV program, it's just got to be a better product. 10 points for Lamar and the Hilltoppers hit 70. But yes, you're 100% correct. I mean, you have kids that are skaters. That's another thing. Skating is not easy. These kids are skaters. Um, that, that, that's part of it. And then, you know, to have the numbers, and I, I don't know that we've had this good of numbers since maybe when I was in high school, or at least not since I started this job. Um, numbers have always been a challenge, and it got it got really small over the last couple years. So when you look at it from a co-op standpoint. You know what? It, it's not just us. There's no. a lot of co-ops. Look at New Bedford. They don't even have a team. New Bedford doesn't have a it's team. It's crazy. Brockton co-ops with Southeastern, uh, Seacock Sto and Stoughton. Stoughton, excuse me. Um, but still, you're right. It's crazy that there's <laughs> hockey's an expensive sport too. That's a, that's another big part of it. It is, it is not cheap to be able to, you know, have all that gear and, and, and pay to play. And no, it's, it's... It's also something that you just can't, after school, you know, hop on campus after school and practice in your own gym. No. You're traveling to ice rinks. Yeah. You're using places that, 
are being used by multiple high school teams, adult leagues, youth leagues, peewee leagues, tournaments. So um, it's a challenge. And yeah. like I said, we're not we're not the only school down here that's co op and it's kind of the way of the way over here. Mm -hmm. Obviously up towards Boston, up north a little more, they don't have to worry about that, but we're not them. So um, well, I think it's great for both schools. And as we go throughout the season, you see the kids in school, there's a little more pep in their step. You know? yeah. They're starting to see a little bit more pride in, 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 uh, in hockey right now because it's a su success they're having. Well, Diamond had a good co-op with Case you know, a few years back when they had uh, Brett Jardin and Jay Silva. They, um, they had a lot of success. I remember going to Gallo for some playoff games. They got pretty deep into the tournament. And, um, you know, they haven't really truly seen that kind of success since then. Um, and now it's Diamond Durfee and Westport. There's one Westport player. So Case isn't even a factor. They're not even involved in it. If Two shots made there by Bobby Lewis. I'll That's tell you what, I'll give a lot of credit to Bridgewater Rain. I'm playing right to the end, not making it easy on Durfee. Ben Sherry coming with a nice four points off the bench. Perry Lewis, no good. The rebound is good from overall. He's quietly had a decent game. Six, six point two seconds to play in the Hilltoppers will pick up win number seven in impressive fashion against a tough divisional opponent, a tough conference opponent, and a win that they truly needed. The Hilltoppers started out the game on a seven nothing run and never looked back. This was just what the doctor ordered for Durfee. And let's see if they can challenge themselves and string these together with a good practice tomorrow and Saturday at home versus Snowden. 17 point fourth quarter for Durfee, 23 point fourth quarter for Bridgewater Rainham. But again, that's with a lot of Durfee starters pulled. So, you know, in a tight game, you wouldn't see that. You would still see most of the starters out there. So, um, a little bit of inflated numbers there, but just a tremendous effort. Durfee holding BR to only four points in the first and just eight points coming out of the locker rooms in the third quarter. Shutdown starts, shutdown finishes. A complete game for Durfee. Well, it's been a fun week. We saw a good game from Diamond yesterday. Very low scoring game tonight. We see a little bit of a blowout, but good to see the Hilltoppers on the winning side. They stay above 500 at seven and five now after the win. I would say your pregame was a great omen with the vest. <laughs> Well, you know what that means. You know what that means. The next <laughs> one. Mr. Superstition the himself. The next one will have the red vest. I will I will let Coach Cruz, uh, <laughs> Coach the Cruz know that uh, I will I will uh, have it on. The next boys came from here at the gym uh, will be that we have is against New Bedford. And um, so I hope you'll join me for that and you better be in that vest. We'll Absolutely. Leave it, we'll leave it at that. So for Brendan Kelly, my broadcast partner, our cameraman tonight, Mike Fernandes, I'm Evan Massoud. Enjoy a great week next week. As again, we won't have live coverage next week. We'll see you the first full week of February on Monday the 6th from Diamond Regional. Good night and enjoy a great weekend, everybody.